Welcome back to net.touchplus.com, your best source for web development tutorials, tips, and screencasts. Today we're going to be taking a look at having some fun and being clever with uh, CSS3 shadows. So we're going to build this. Now what's interesting about this is uh, we have two layers of shadows going on here. So we have a, a base layer just to give us a little bit of depth. But then we have this shadow that's on its own layer, quote unquote, and we're able to apply uh, transformations to it. CSS3 transformations to, to really play with the perspective and the angle of it. So we're going to build this from scratch. Let's go into Espresso. And I've deleted all of my styling. So now all we have here is just a div and it contains an image. So if we go back, I'll close this out and we'll begin from scratch. So if I view this, this is what we're starting out with, just a single image. So at the very least, let's begin by uh, styling our body. So. I'm going to give it a width of 500 pixels and a margin. Let's push it from the top a little bit, but make everything else auto so that it centers on the page. So if I go back now, now it's centered on the page. Good deal. All right, so the next step is uh, let's start styling the box, and this is the parent container. So we'll begin by uh, applying a shadow. Now, we, we will need to do WebKit, Mozilla, and the official, but we're going to save some time for now. <clears throat> and I'll just do WebKit, and then we'll apply the rest later. So we need to apply a handful of parameters here. The first is X offset, so how much do you want the shadow to go towards the right? One pixel. Then how much to go down? About two pixels worth. These are somewhat arbitrary, so you can play around with them. Uh, how much blur? Roughly about four pixels, maybe five. And then finally, uh, what color? So I could say red. And if I were to go back, you'll see that that's been applied. And it looks like maybe when I cropped out this image, I left a little bit of transparency on the bottom, and that's where that white is coming from. But that's okay, because we're going to be uh, creating kind of like a Kodak image, so it will be white anyways. So zero for red, zero for green, zero for blue, so this is pretty much gonna be black, but then we can set an alpha. So one would be hardcore black, and zero would be transparent and visible. We'll set it down to, you know, you can play around with it again, maybe around 0.5. So now if we go back, you can see that we have just a very subtle shadow showing up. All right, so the next step is to begin styling. Um, well, first, let's Kodakify it. This is what I call Kodakify. And this is where we make it look like those old Kodak images. So we're going to give some tatting, 10 pixels all around, and set a background of white. So when we do that and we come back, now you can see, at least to start, we have a nice border, but it looks like the image is too large. So we can fix that easily and go into the image, <coughs> excuse me, and I can say the width needs to be 100%. And if you want, you could even say max width is 100%. And now you can see that it will never exceed its container like we have here. But now we have a cool Kodak image. If we only did this, it would look cool. But we're going to take it even further. So let's go back and now uh, let's do a little bit more. We need to apply a border. So why don't we when you're applying a border to the image, sometimes it's helpful, go and grab uh, with the eyedropper tool the darkest color and then make it a little bit darker. So here I did one pixel solid and I came to 8A4419. If I go back, now you can see right here just a slightly darker shade of that color. But why don't we play around with it and make it inset instead? And what that's going to do is it's going to make the left and the top a little bit darker than the right and the bottom, and it adds a little bit more depth. Okay, so now we're going to do the fun stuff here, and we're going to apply our shadow. But think about it. How can you apply uh, one of those shadows, an angled shadow? So we would probably need to use something like WebKit transformations. But how would you do that without affecting the rest of the element itself? And the key is to apply it to its own, again, its own layer, quote unquote. And the way we're going to do that is by using a before or after. So box after. And this way we can add the shadow there and then we can man manipulate only that shadow. So let's try it out. First, we got to set some content and that'll just be a blank space. If you wanted, you could do something like this. There you go. But no, we don't need that. Next, we're going to set, uh, let's go ahead and apply the box shadow. So WebKit box shadow. And we're going to do 100 pixels from the left, zero from the top, 10 pixels, and then about 20 pixels. And then the RGBA, again, 000. And again, play around with this, maybe 0.2. 
So if we do it just like that, you're not going to see anything. And how come? And it's because, well, with a single space there, it's not taking up any space. So the way you can work with this instead is set a position in context of absolute. So if I go back now, you can begin to see what's going on here. So there's our shadow, but it's still, you know, that's, that's not going to work for us. It's still too tiny. So for example, if we go back, save that and come back, now you can see kind of what's going on there. So let's go ahead and set a width now of 50%. And if we go back, now we're starting to get somewhere. We're starting to get a, a shadow that we can manipulate, but still, uh, we need to do more here. So for example, if I were to set, uh, let's try setting a bottom of, I don't know, around 10, 20 pixels. Watch what happens. That's applied in relation to the window. So here's an interesting thing. Even though you would think, you know, with CSS, applying after would apply the content like right here, it's still bound to this element here. So if I set a positioning context on this element, oops, I'm sorry, relative, the shadow is going to be bound to it, as you can see right there. But that's good. Now we can begin working with it and, uh, you know, molding it how we wish. So now let's go and set a right, and you'll need to play with this, definitely, I did. Now we set it in a right of 90 pixels, and there we get that. So the next step is, let's set a height. So we have our width, now a height, and let's try setting it around 40, 50 pixels. Now, see how we can, we can set width and height to specifically um, to mold our shadow. We still have this problem because it's being applied after, we're getting some of these weird issues right here. So the key is to apply a negative Z index. So if we do C index, negative one, and this isn't going to work in all browsers. Like in IE, uh, if you set a negative Z index, you won't see the contents at all. But in most modern browsers, that'll work just fine, and that'll place it behind the image. So now you can see even that right there is kind of cool, but we're going to take it further, and we're going to take advantage of WebKit transformations. So first, let's go ahead and do WebKit transform. And this is where you can uh, you scale or rotate or skew. We're going to skew in this case, and you need to play around with it. So because it's going to the right, we need to skew negative. So for, let's start by doing a pretty extreme 90 degrees. WebKit transform, skew, negative 90 degrees. And we're not seeing anything, and that's because it's been vertical. So now, why don't we bring it down just a touch? Yeah, now you can kind of see what's happening there. So you'll need to play around with it. I think when I did it, I came to around 30 or 40. Yeah, there we go. And now you have a really cool effect there. So this is the key, is with the bottom in height. So if I set bottom to zero, or let's go back and get rid of it entirely, you can see that's kind of the effect you get. So you have to play around with the, vo the, the values. Bottom, 50 pixels, and that gets too high. So you gotta play around with it just a little bit to make it fit your image. But now we have a very, very cool effect. So what's up with this with 50%? Well, we could set it to 100%. But you can see it comes out a little too high and we don't really need it to be that wide. We just need to give it somewhat of an arbitrary value just so that it extends there. So you might wanna play around with it. I came to 50%, but do whatever you want there. Okay, so now you have your cool shadow. The final step is to go ahead and make this work with uh, like Mozilla and the regular version. So Mozilla and then box shadow. So this is the official version that should be at the bottom. This is Mozilla. And then uh, transforms are beginning to come. So let's go ahead and do Mozilla. And then finally, the official version of transform. And there we go. So let's see if we need to do anything else. Yeah, and then you would need to come up to the box and make that work again. It's irritating, but you should be thankful that you can use these. And then change that to Moz box shadow. So now if we view it, there we go. And now with minimal effort, you have a very, very cool shadow that you can apply to your projects. So you'll want to save this to uh, something like a, a little text snippet so that you don't always have to do this from scratch. But once you've done it once, you now have these cool kind of perspective-y shadows. All right, for more tips and tutorials, always visit net.touchplus.com. See you guys. Bye.